One of the most useful things in a science class or in science in general is the ability to collect data and information and to visualize or present that data and information. And most oftentimes that is done with graphs. And often, or in the past, uh, that has been done by just making graphs on freehand, but now with the availabil availability of computers, graphs are almost exclusively and entirely made on computers. And in this video, we're going to take a look at some of the basic things that you would need to include in a graph to gain an understanding of how to create a graph. And in future videos, we'll look at how to make graphs in Google Documents. So this is Graphing 101. So what is data? Data is information that is gathered during an experiment or observations. And it can be recorded in things like tables. Like this right here would be a table. Um, you could do different drawings or notes like this. Maybe if you're drawing uh, different cells, that might be something you do a drawing. Um, different notes from different observations. It can be recorded in a number of different ways, but most often we see data organized into a table after it, been, after it has been collected. And so when you're making a graph, uh, specifically a, an electronic graph, probably in Google Documents or maybe Microsoft Excel, there's a couple of things that, um, that you need to do in making that graph. Uh, rules, if you'd like to think of it that way. And the first is to title the graph using the following, independent variable and dependent variable. And most oftentimes, this is going to be titled, your title will be the effect of whatever your independent variable is on the dependent variable. And the axes are going to be labeled such that the x-axis is going to be the independent variable and the y-axis is going to be the dependent variable. And so if you know your independent variable and dependent variable, it makes it very easy to label the two axes and also give your graph a title. Thirdly, you want to select the graph that's going to best represent the data. And we're going to go a couple, through a couple different types of graphs here in just a second so you can be able to do that. The fourth is to connect data points with a line or a curve on a line graph. So if we're making a line graph, you want to connect those data points. And Google actually does that for you automatically when you're making a line graph. And the last part is to include a key or a legend, especially with bar graphs when you have multiple different types. Like, for example, in this graph right here, there's multiple different colors of these bars. So this graph would need a key or a legend that shows what those different colors represent. So let's take a look at the different graphs that we have here. And the first type that we're going to look at is a bar graph. And you'd want to use a bar graph. You probably have seen this before, but you'd want to use a bar graph when one of the variables is non-numerical. So our independent variable is going here on the x-axis, the y-axis, uh, the vertical axis here is our dependent variable. And so what we are looking at here is scores by team per season. So scores, the number of scores or points that they've had um, by different teams per season. And so we have three different teams. Here's our key or our legend. We've got team A, B, and C. A, B, and C. And so we can see how many points they've scored per season. And we've got a number of different seasons here. So the category that we're looking at is the season here. And then we have different teams within those. Um, and so this graph does a nice job of showing which team has scored how many points or goals per different season. So a bar graph, when one of our variables is uh, non-numerical, meaning it's not a number. Um, and yes, this is a number. 2002, 2003, 4, 5, those are numbers, but we consider those to be categories. It's a category of the season of 2002. We're just writing it as 2002. The second type of graph that we're going to look at is something called a histogram. And it's very similar to a bar graph, but it's not quite entirely the same. And the biggest difference with a histogram is it's a continuous uh, distribution of uh, the data or the frequency of how often something occurs. And so you can see, if we go back to the bar graph real quick, you can see that there's some space in between these individual bars. The histogram is a continuous. You can see that all of these bars are connected here. And in this case, we were looking at the exam scores. Here's our number of students. This is the score on the final exam. And what this is showing us is how many students scored, uh, scored differently on the exam. So how many students scored between 60 and 80 out of 100? We can see that that is about 40. How many sc students scored between 80 and 100? We can see that that's about 20. So we have a continuous distribution or showing of how often um, the results occurred in this situation, which happens to be the number of students per exam score. 
The line graph is another type of graph that we will use often in addition to the bar graph. And a line graph we want to use when one variable, the independent, affects another variable, the dependent. And in most cases, we're going to be graphing something over a, over a period of time, a change over a period of time. And in this case, we're looking at days in the week, and we've recorded the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit over these days. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we can see the high and the low. So we have two different types of data on here, and you can do that. You can include multiple types of data. And we can see how uh, the temperature has changed over these couple of days over a period of time. You'll notice that the points are connected by a line, which was one of the rules that we talked about, as well as has a title and the axes are labeled. The last type of graph that we're going to look at is something called a pie graph, and I'm sure you've probably seen these before. What's important about a pie graph is that it shows a proportion, or how many out of a total group. So let's say that we have a group of people and we ask how many people like pumpkin pie, cherry pie, apple, coconut, pecan, um, and these are the results that we get. If we have a set number of people, maybe we sample 50 people, we can count up and determine how many people like pumpkin and how many people like cherry and how many people like apple, etc. And so we know the proportion. Maybe um, if it's, uh, for example, 30 people, or let's say we sample 100 people. Well, in this case, 30 people said that they liked pumpkin, and so that's going to represent 30% of that overall group. Um, you could do this for a wide variety of things, but what you need for a pie graph is to have a sample group, a set number of individuals or whatever it is that you're looking at, and figure out how many per different category um, are, are answering that question or, or selecting whatever the option is. So those are the four different types of graphs that we're going to look, look at. Um, primarily, we'll be using bar graphs, line graphs, and pie charts in biology. Uh, so if you'd like to take an opportunity to do some practice, here is some data looking at a control and three different variables and looking at how these different variables and control change over a period of time, over seven minutes. Um, the units, uh, grams and minutes, and then the units for our data here are ambiguous in this case. But if you want to, you can actually make this into type of graph, try to figure out what type it would be, and go ahead and pause the video, make a graph, and then on the next slide I'll show you what it looks like. Hopefully you've, hopefully you've had a chance to make your graph, and so what this would look like um, would be a line graph would be the appropriate type, and we have actually four different lines on here. You can see they're connected by a line. On the x-axis we have our time, on the y-axis our uh, size, and we're showing how that changes over time, and then I have a key and a, or a legend here to show the different lines. We'll have lots of practice in class, and I also have videos that show individually how to make each of these different types of graphs in Google Docs.